we want to welcome you to our Leavenworth City Commission meeting. We ask that you turn off or silence all cell phones. Our meetings are televised every day on Channel 2 at 6 p.m. and midnight and also available for viewing on YouTube. At this time, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance followed by a silent meditation. First proclamation, a National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week. Emergencies can occur at any time that require police, fire, or emergency medical services. When an emergency occurs, the prompt response of police officers, firefighters, and par uh, paramedics is critical to the protection of life <coughs> and preservation of property. The safety of our police officers and firefighters is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who telephone the Leavenworth Police Fire Communications Center. Public safety dispatchers are the single vital link for our police officers and firefighters by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them information, and ensuring their safety. Public safety dispatchers in the Leavenworth Police Department have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fires, and treatment of patients. Each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their job in the past year. I, Jermaine Wilson, Mayor of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, hereby proclaim National Public Safety Telecommunications Week, April the 9th through the 15th. Right, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, very briefly, Mr. Mayor, Commission, on behalf of County Chief McKeel and the Leavenworth Police Department, we employ 10 full time dispatchers at the uh, city of Leavenworth. Uh, they answer somewhere between 70 and 75,000 phone calls every year in dispatch. That equates to a little over 20,000 calls for service for the police department, 3,500 calls for the fire department, and countless other car tag requests and you know, information in exchange for the officers and the firefighters to keep them safe. So we often uh, call them the unsung heroes of public safety, which they are. I appreciate very much pausing this week to recognize them. Thank you. On the fire department, we're dispatched by both the city and the county. And every emergency response begins and ends with a dispatcher. They have a very tough job of uh, deciphering the information they're getting, to relay the information to us so we have the best possible information that we know what we're walking into. It's a very tough and stressful job, and they deserve everybody's respect and support. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Leavenworth Spring Clean Up Day. Uh, the Leavenworth City Commission is committed to working toward making the city of Leavenworth the most attractive, livable, healthy, and vibrant community possible. Your elected leaders realize it takes the goodwill and hard work of all citizens to achieve such lofty vision and therefore encouraging all Leavenworth citizens to assume responsibility in maintaining a clean and attractive neighborhood environment. Such collaborative efforts can serve to foster a sense of community, invigorate a sense of pride about the community, serve as an opportunity for organization and uh, leadership skills and development, and reinforce the virtue of personal responsibility while resulting in a more attractive community with a higher quality of life. The Spring Cleanup Kickoff will be held on Saturday, April 22nd, 2023 at 8.30 a.m. with the ceremony at Warren Educational Complex. I, Jermaine Wilson, Mayor of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, hereby proclaim April 22nd, 2023 to be Leavenworth Spring Cleanup Day. Thank you. Selfie. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor and City Commission, for the last 15 years, the Leavenworth Citywide Spring Cleanup has been an opportunity for volunteers to help rid the city of trash in one day. You are all invited.
invited to our kickoff event taking place 8.30 a.m. April 22nd, where hundreds of volunteers will come together to prepare to pick up trash. <clears throat> so in addition to the popular trash pickup event, the city will provide <clears throat> several opportunities for residents. One is the Recycling Center is going to have hours 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. on April 22nd. Large item drop-off is for like mattresses, um, furniture items will be 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, household hazardous waste disposal, disposal will be available 9 a.m. to noon at Pennsylvania and Lawrence Avenue. This is for residents to dispose of items that should not go down the drain, such as paint, paint thinner, solvents, oil, gas, mixtures, automobile fluids, herbicides, and pesticides. And then we're having the ever popular paper shredding. This is uh, 10 a.m. to 12.45 p.m. at Citizens Federal Savings Bank, 5151 South 4th Street, and 1 to 2 p.m. at their location at 312 South 5th Street. And then the brush site will be open 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And that's at 1803 South 2nd Street. So this information is also on our city website if you want to take a look at that. Thanks. <laughs> National Library Week. Libraries provide the opportunity for everyone to pursue their passions and engage in lifelong learning, allowing them to live their best life. Libraries have long served as trusted institutions for all members of the community, regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, and social economic status. Libraries strive to develop and maintain programs and collections that are as diverse as the populations they serve and ensure equity of access for all. Libraries adapt to the ever-changing needs of their communities, continually expanding their collections, services, and partnerships. Libraries play a critical role in the economic vitality of communities by providing internet and technology access, literacy skills, and support for job seekers, small businesses, and entrepreneurs. Libraries are accessible and inclusive places that promote a sense of local connection, advancing understanding, civic engagement, and shared community goals. Libraries are cornerstones of democracy, promoting a free exchange of information and ideas for all. Libraries, librarian, and library workers are joining library supporters and advocates across the nation to celebrate National Library Week. I, Jermaine Wilson, Mayor of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, hereby proclaim April 23rd, 20, April 23rd through 29th as National Library Week. Here we go. Oh, this is the scary part. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Um, I used the opportunity uh, my visit here tonight to share some information with Sarah. A quarterly report basically for the first three months of this year so you can get a snapshot of the kind of business the library is doing. I know Mayor Wilson asked me to bring up uh, a special program we had last weekend, the Super, Super Mario Weekend at the library. We had about 200 uh, families, or 200 people there, families of all ages, came to the library, including the mayor and his son, who looked great in a Mario mustache. Uh, <laughs> we've, been, we've been really focusing on doing all, all ages programming and have been very successful. We've had hundreds of people for uh, Halloween, hundreds of people for Harry Potter. Um, so it's a, a growing sense of um, revitalization for the community that coming back to, to the library after the COVID effect, which is steadily wearing off, which you will certainly see by the quarterly report. Our summer reading uh, planning is underway, and last year's was very successful. We, we expect to have uh, the same success this year, probably, I'm sure, even growing even more. Uh, we're going to have a carnival as our kickoff, we'll have a little train, we'll have some indoor games and things like that. Uh, and, uh, oh yes, I, I visited with, uh, part of the, one of the things we really try to do is collaborate with city departments, and I know when the cards go out to many of the residents regarding their, their selection of trash containers, we uh, met with the city representative today, and we will serve as a place where people who don't have computers, who aren't quite sure how to handle this, this process, We'll come to the library and our staff will be trained and ready to help them make their selection online. So we're always looking for opportunities if there are any city departments, programs, or functions that I know the, um, there's an effort to clean up um, storm sewers and, and make people aware of what they should and shouldn't do in storm sewers. So we have thousands of people to come in. I think it would be a great place and a very opportune place to 
to post that kind of information and share that information. So we could certainly be, be glad to help you um, get your jobs done and, and everybody else in the audience. Too. You don't have a library card. So, again, thank you very much and uh, we appreciate your continued support. Next item on the agenda, old business, uh, consideration of previous meeting minutes, minutes from March 28, 2023, regular meeting. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, if not, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, move to approve the uh, minutes from last meeting. Second. Our motion has been seconded. Begin voting with Commissioner Hingula. Aye. 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 Our motion carried, four <coughs> zero. Next item on the agenda, uh, second consideration ordinance, second consideration ordinance number 8210, approval for a special use permit to allow two family dwelling at uh, 113 Seneca Street. Mr. Mayor and Commissioner, there have been no changes since first reading. As a reminder, this was a duplex at one point. They went to a single family and back to a duplex. So it's before you tonight for final consideration. Again, there have been no changes. And do we have any questions or comments? Uh, if not, this does require a roll call, starting with Commissioner Martin. Aye. 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 That's four zero. Uh, next item on the agenda, second consideration ordinance number 8211, rezoning uh, 3523 10th Avenue uh, from multifamily residential district to medium density single family residential district. Mr. Mayor and Commission, again, there have been no changes to this item. Uh, as a quick reminder, this is somebody who's seeking to sell a property, and there were some uh, title issues uh, because of the fact that it's a single family on a multifamily uh, zoned lot. So they are requesting the rezone to the single family, which is appropriate for the structure on the site. Again, there have been no changes. Any questions you have, uh, we'll do our best to answer those. Now, if there's no questions or comments, no. that requires a roll call again. Commissioner Angela? Aye. 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 All right. Pass. Four zero. Uh, next item on the agenda, uh, new business, public comments. Anyone from the audience that would like to make any comments? Uh, that is not uh, regarding anything that is on the agenda. Uh, Ms. Harris, is there anyone signed up? There's none. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next item. Public hearing. Uh, public hearing for unsafe and dangerous structure. Uh, this does require a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. So moved. Motion has been seconded. We've been voting with Commissioner Martin. Aye. 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 All right, motion carried for zero. We are now in the public hearing. We'll turn it over to our Planning Community Development Director, Julie Hurley, and our City Planner, Bethany Falvey. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. So I'll just give kind of a brief uh, review of our demolition process and how we got here tonight. Um, so we first start this process with our code enforcement officers back in the fall. And through the course of their daily activities with inspecting properties in the city, um, they kind of throughout the year are pretty aware of uh, properties that are vacant and in serious disrepair. So we start really identifying this list back in the fall, properties again that are vacant, um, that have had multiple violations with no attempts um, by property owners to fix them up. Um, so properties that are really um, in a pretty bad state. So. We first send out notification to property owners back in December that their properties have been identified as a, um, a dangerous or unsafe structure that has a blighting influence on the neighborhood. Um, we give them ample opportunity to contact staff, work with us. Um, we let them know exactly what violations need to be corrected in order to get their properties into compliance with our regulations. Um, so. You've, seen, you've had this a couple of times. We reviewed them real quick um, up front, and then we were here just to um, set the resolution for this public hearing. So something else we started doing a couple of years ago, this is not required by statute, but we do send notice to property owners within 200 feet of, a, of one of these properties. Um, neighboring property owners are the ones that have to live with these homes and properties in their neighborhood and are affected by them on a daily basis. And so we want to give those neighboring property owners a chance to comment, um, come in and talk to you all, or comment and talk to us and let us know how they feel about uh, the properties being taken down. So um, if you have any questions on the process, up to that point I can answer them for you. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and <coughs> hand it over to Bethany Falvey, who's our city planner. Um, we've got 10 properties on the list tonight. I know we've got a number of property owners here. Mm -hmm. Um, included in the packet was the letter that we sent to property owners and the remediation agreement, um, signed or not. 
um, and some photos. And I'm going to go through kind of the photos you saw in the fall and then any progress from the last couple days. We've got some updated photos. Before Bethany gets going, I will just kind of remind how we go through this. Um, I know it has been a little while since we had a, a list of demo properties. So we'll go through each of the properties, um, hear from property owners if they're here. You all can discuss. Um, so your options will be to um, have a consensus to proceed with demolition. Um, and then that gives us a time frame that we have to give the property owners 10 days in which they can commence repair or removal of the property uh, of the structure on their own. Or you can have consensus to give the property owners a an extension um, to perform work on it in order to bring it back. Um, and then we would review those. I know Bethany had a date. What we would June recommend... 15th. 15th? June 13th. 13th. We would typically give them about 60 days. And so the next regular meeting after 60 days from tonight is June 13th. So for any properties that you want to give an extension to, our recommendation would be June 13th. And then we would see those properties again for an update on June 13th. And then your third option is just to remove a property from... The demolition list and that would be if um, you feel like they've satisfied requirements um, on that so I'll let Bethany go ahead all right um, the first property up tonight is 612 North 2nd Street it's a single-family house um, last water service is January 3rd 2022 um, there hasn't been any change um, here's a picture from November and here's one from yesterday um, we haven't had any contact from the owner, and according to county records, just within the last month, it's changed hands into a new owner. Um, I believe that property owner is here. Um, I, I saw there was a lot of construction going on right next door, so I wondered what was going on there. There's a new duplex being constructed on the lot okay. right next to this one, yeah. Your name and address, please. Jerry Wesley, I acquired this property about uh, three weeks ago. We uh, evicted the cat lady that was living there. It smells really bad. Uh, but if you'll give me 60 days, I think we can get it uh, at least on the road of recovery. And uh, I would say three to six months to get it completely done. Okay, and the water is turned on today. You said the water turned on today? Yeah. Okay. So we'll, if you, once you all kind of discuss and decide what you want to do, we'll keep track of okay. that, and then you'll make the actual motion once we get through it um, to proceed as discussed on each of these. The uh, only question that I have within 60 days, what do you think you'll be able to have completed? I don't think it will be completed. Uh, basically materials and then the workforce, you know, to get everyone there every day. Okay. And so... Uh, it's not likely it'll be, be completed in 60 days. You can't build a house in 60 days. No, no, I said, what all will you be able to have completed? Uh, I think we'll have a new roof on it. Okay. We'll have uh, new uh, windows and doors. And uh, hopefully some things on the inside, too. Okay, appreciate it. Okay, uh, thank you. So the items in the remediation agreement that we had um, sent out was windows, New siding and trim, porch replacement or repair, and foundation repairs. So, okay, that meets some of it. I'm sure we get most of that done. Yep. And I know Mr. Wesley's familiar, but just kind of yeah. as a reminder yeah. to everybody, just make sure you get permits before you start any work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Wesley. Any comments? Do you need anything else from me? Uh, any comments, questions among the commissioners? No, I think I'm, I'm okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just, glad to hear that somebody took it and is going to make something of it. <laughs> I'm okay with hold, holding off. Yeah. 60 days. 60 days. The next property is 710 South 7th Street. Um, this is a single family house and accessory structure. There hasn't been active water service since 2008. Um, the owner did sign a remediation agreement and has indicated intent to repair. Um, this is November last year, um, and this is today. As you can see, there hasn't been any change and there's no active building permits. Um, recent discussions with the uh, property owner, um, he intends to possibly demolish and rebuild. Um, we've worked with him on proper setbacks that are required for this lot, um, and he's getting a survey done as a first step. How long have you had this building? 
and so now you're going to do something? We're going to tear it down. Okay. I'm, I'm happy with that because it needs to be torn down. Yeah. Oh, oh, what's your name, sir? Kevin Liss. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so are you looking to have it torn down within the 60 days? Oh, yeah, probably so. 60 days is okay. Yeah, we're just we're having the survey so we can see to make sure the footprint is okay for the new house back up. Yeah, we'll keep it on the demolition yeah. list, please. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yep. All right. I mean, uh, any other comments from the no. All right, so we want we to spoke. continue keeping on the... Demolition. Yep, so okay. 60 days we'll review again. Okay, yep, thank you. I, I think that's it. <laughs> Yep, he's the next one also. Okay. No. Oh, okay. No. Or no, he's not. Oh, no, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. That one's coming down. Um, 817 North 16th Street is a single family house and two accessory structures. Last water service was uh, February 19th, 2021. Um, here is some pictures from November and today. Um, there hasn't been any change, and we haven't had any contact from owners. We did have a neighbor call on this and stated that they are in favor of the demolition. Okay. Um, I, I I'm in favor yeah, of the demolition. Yeah, same yeah, yes. Keep it on the list. No, let's go ahead no, and do it. Demolish it. Well, demolish yeah, it. Yeah. Forward with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Commissioner, I, I, want, I just want to remind everybody, what the statutes do require is that you have a reasonable time on it. Uh, the default rule yep. here is the 10 days. I just want to make sure you all understand that unless you're doing something different, the 60 days. The default rule, if you're if you're saying keep it on the demo list, the default rule is the 10 days. Yep. That's what we have in the okay. draft resolution. Yep. Okay. Thanks. So how that typically works for us is we'll wait the 10 days, um, assuming there's been no other contact from the property owner, no permits pulled or anything, then we'll start our process on moving forward. Okay. Okay. Cool. 701 Chestnut Street, this is a single-family house. Um, last water service was um, October 29, or 2009. The owner did sign a remediation agreement and has indicated intent to repair. There aren't any active building permits, um, but there appears to be some work um, on the rear addition. Here are the November pictures. And then this week, you can see that there is some repairs done. Um, the work completed does require a building permit, so that will be um, need to be pulled. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I have a bond, so I, don't, I won't get uh, a roofing permit until it's completed. It's not quite done. Pretty close. Okay. okay, so you plan on repairing this? Oh, yeah, it's just a recent purchase. Okay. You've been purchasing a lot of stuff here. All right, so you plan on uh, pulling the building permit with oh, yeah. uh, okay. yeah. 60 days? Oh, no, Within no, no. 60 days. Yeah. No, I'm, you can see, look, I'm, I'm, the roof's pretty close to the top. I was waiting to get it complete, then I get a permit. Have you replaced the whole roof or just yeah. there on the back? No, the whole thing. The whole thing, that's what oh, I thought. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, they tore it all off. All right. So within 60 days, you plan on having the roof repaired? Oh, yeah. Day. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, and we paid it. We've made some, so the leopard spots are gone. Uh, comments amongst the commissioners? No. No. No 60 days. Sounds good. Is there anything else, Bethany, on the remediation list that yeah. maybe you pointed out? There's a wall side. Replace roof, repair exterior walls and paint, yeah. remove or repair porch roofs, which is part of that, and repair gutters and trim. Yeah, that porch was in pretty bad shape. Yeah. That's taken care of. All right, um, we have the census, 60 days? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. right. um, 776 Miami is an accessory structure. Um, the owner did obtain a demolition permit and demolished the structure as of 2 22 So staff would recommend removal um, from the list. I agree. I agree. Yes. Mm -hmm.
1030 Miami is a single family house and accessory structures. Last water service was August of 2020. Um, there has been no change, no active building permits or contact from the property owner. These are November photos and recent photos. This is in terrible shape. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Well, I think uh, move forward with the demolition. Mr. Commissioner, yes, sir. I would recommend with each one of these, you do yeah. ask if there's anybody in the audience. Yeah. Oh, which thank you. Space. Okay. Is, is there yeah. anyone in the audience? Uh, any owners of the property? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Waters. Okay, so move forward. Yes, ma'am. Move forward with the demolition. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. 212 Olive Street is a single family house and accessory structure. Last water service was April of 2021. Um, there's been no change, no active building permits, um, and we haven't heard from the property owner. Um, here's it um, this week with no change. Mm -hmm. Is there any uh, owners of this property in the audience? Or anybody that wants to speak on this? Yeah. If not, move forward with them. Yes. Okay. Yes, and this was on the demolition list before. Yeah. Yeah, this was on several years ago, and the commission at that time had removed it. Um, and we, code enforcement has had a couple of court authorized abatements on this property, clearing out junk. Um, several years ago, we, I think it was about $8,000 in removal of junk from this yard. Um, and then this property was sold at last year's tax sale. Yeah, it was sold at last year's tax sale, and there's been nothing done with it since that time. So if the city tears it down, then the, the cost of that uh, demolition will go on the a, a lien against the property, correct? Yeah, so any cost that the city incurs with the demolition, utility disconnects, the environmental reviews we have to do, those are all assessed to the property. And then at some point in the future, if that's sold, um, then those have to be paid at that time. Okay. Mm -hmm. 200 Osage is an accessory structure only. Um, owner indicated his intent to repair the property. Um, at the time of writing this, there had been no change, but as you can see, there's been some movement. They do have an active building permit to remove the second story of the garage and rebuild the roof at a, a one-story um, accessory structure. Uh, anyone in the audience, any uh, owners, or anyone that would like to speak to this property? Not. I've been out to see this property. Yeah. And it's more than just the property. There's all kinds of, what's the nice way to put it? Trash. Large trash mm -hmm. behind that fence and around that. Uh, I mean, it's, it's obvious a, pl a place, obviously a place where vermin, feral cats, who knows what kinds of animals might be scooting around in there. And living in there, so we're more concerned with its structure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, I mean, yeah. so the junk we can doesn't issue. look good either. Yeah. So and the junk we can handle through standard code enforcement. Yeah. Um, activities <clears throat> on this one, since there is an active building permit, yeah. I would suggest sixty days, um, and then we can move. come back and see what they've managed to okay. get done yeah, in that time. Is... Well, there's nobody here. Is that correct? I, no. It didn't sound like it. And they were oh. made aware of that there was a hearing tonight. But yes. When, when did the owner indicate that they were going to make improvements? They pulled a permit in the middle of March. Yeah, and I actually okay. talked to the family members today, and so I was actually trying to talk directly to mm -hmm. the owner, but the family members said that they are going to move forward with the demolition process. Uh, so I was just hoping to speak with the, with the homeowner. They're, yeah. they're going to demolish it then? Yeah, that's what he stated. The whole the thing or just stated. still the second story? Oh. Yeah, just the second story. Right. So yeah. I was yeah. just kind of hoping that... Yeah. So again, yeah, since tonight. there's the active building permit yeah. and they have started yeah. some work, I would suggest that we give okay. them um, the time and then we can come back and revisit it. Yeah. And with any of these, you know, we'll be trying to make contact again and make and you know make sure they're aware of the action tonight and you know try to get them to talk to us. It's always better if you know they'll give us a call and yeah. we can make sure everybody's on the same page. Sure. Okay. Appreciate it. Sixty days. Sixty days. Yeah. 229 Osage is a single-family 
house and accessory structure. Last water service is 214.22. Um, there are active building permits and work is occurring. Um, at the time of writing the policy report, there was no contact from the owner. Um, I believe the owner is here. Um, these are from November, and then these are from this week. So you can see some progress being made. Uh, the owners, yes, sir. Uh, please sit down. Yeah, uh, we really just got started about six weeks on this. We've owned it for about six months, but we had some family things occur. But the framing's pretty much done. The uh, electrical panel being inspected tomorrow, and then I believe the permits pulled the plumbing too. Plumbing, HVAC, and everything should be started in two weeks. Okay, so 60 yeah, I, I looked at it today. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of work going on there, and yeah. I actually yeah. lived in this house when I was a little kid. Uh, yeah, yeah well, really? we're on dumpster six from clearing it out of the yeah. house. So yeah, there a lot in there, that's that's that cool. we kind of there you gutted it. I mean, yeah. no yeah. walls yeah. left. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very right. good. And like I said, we really just got started about six weeks on it a minute ago, but yeah, it's coming along. We well, appreciate the mm -hmm. work and improvements that you have done. Uh, yeah. So 60 days would be pretty good for you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I think I could be wrapped up in 60 days or pretty dang close. I mean, yeah. Okay. And usually with these, you know, we don't necessarily have to see a finished product correct, in correct. 60 days. Just you've you've crossed off the things on the list. It's these big items. Yeah. You know, the finished the stuff like you're going to be working on the inside, yeah, you know, last. So it's those... It's those big outside items that are on the remediation agreement that we need to see taken care of. So, yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, 60 day extension? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. And 1128 Quincy um, is a single family house. Last water service was October of 2019. Um, there's been no change, no active building permits, and no contact from the owner. Um, here's mm -hmm. November. And this week. Uh, and the, is the, the homeowner here or anyone that would like to speak to this property? Uh, please come up to the podium. State your name and address, please. My name is Peggy Holmes. My address is 1136 Quincy Street. Our property is adjacent to this house. During the course of the last two years, there have been squatters in this house. There have been uh, drug activity. We've had somebody very out of control on our property three different times where we've had to call the police. We've called the police because the house was being broken into. Twice I've had my granddaughter at my house and had to drag her into the bedroom on the floor because the police were there with assault rifles off this property and I was scared if they started shooting that could come into my house for my granddaughter. Since then, I don't allow my grandkids to stay in my house because of these. Right now they are out. They've boarded up the house, but they've broken in twice since it's been boarded. So I'm all in favor of having this thing torn down. Well, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much thank for sharing you. your thoughts. Um, I recommend moving forward with the demolition. demolition. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, so just to recap, um, 612 North 2nd Street, we're going to do a 60-day extension. Um, 710 South 7th Street, a 60-day extension. 817 North 16th Street, move forward with demolition. 701 Chestnut Street, 60-day extension. 776 Miami, remove from the list. Um, 1030 Miami Street, move forward with demolition. 212 Olive Street, move forward with demolition. 200 Osage, 60-day extension. 229 Osage Street, 60-day extension. And 1128 Quincy Street, move forward with demolition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have a consensus. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so like again, like Attorney Waters said, um, the ones that you've elected to move forward with demolition, yeah. we still, by statute, have to give a reasonable amount of time where we don't start our process. Um, so generally, that's about 10 days. Um, so we hold off on, um, you know, doing the environmental reviews, 
cutting off utilities, all of that. Um, once that time has elapsed, then we'll start our process. It is still about a two-month process once, once we start that. There's a lot of steps that we have to take um, to get them to come down, so it's not like you're going to see them coming down in two weeks, um, but we'll be able to start that process um, here shortly. And then the ones you gave the extension to, we'll see back here on June 13th. Thank you so much, Ken. Do these right. require... still a resolution to consider tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah. The resolution. Okay. Yep. The resolution. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah that's so in the We have to close yeah. the public hearing question. first. Do these yeah. require publication in the newspaper, too? Yep. As yeah. part of um, statute requires us, we had to send okay. certified mail. They were published in the newspaper yep. multiple times. So it's, um, yeah, we followed I mean, all that. Will they need to be again? Um, the resolution the will be published in the newspaper. Is that okay. right? Yeah. 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 Thank and you. They go to the lien holders and uh, yes. the property sure. The same yeah. list. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, before I close the public hearing, do we have any other comments from the commissioners? No. I think this is, these are right. They need to be Pretty taken down. Mm -hmm. Pretty to straightforward. Yeah. Okay. Uh, motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. I'll uh, begin voting with. Uh, Aye. 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 Uh, motion carried 4 0. Uh, public hearing is closed. Uh, at this time, we need a motion to consider resolution B2331 demolition or extension to repair. So moved. Second. Uh, motion has been seconded. We begin voting with Wait, Commissioner Walker. Oh, we have, we have to I go know, through each one. Like, like, so, you know, since we don't want to draft on the fly, we make a motion to approve the resolution uh, as through the time periods that were just discussed and approved on. Okay. And then that staff will edit the re resolution on that way. But I would yes. uh, I would incorporate by reference your findings as to the number of days that you agreed on as to each of these properties. Okay. So you don't have to restate them all, just say right. as, as <laughs> agreed upon by agreed the commission. Upon. Okay, and Mr. Mayor, I do move to approve the resolution B2331 uh, to demolish as stated and extend to repair as stated for the set time frame as stated. Second. That's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> motion has been seconded. Do we want to become Mr. Aye. 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 Okay, thank you, Mayor. Thank, thank you so you. much. Appreciate thank you all. You. Just a bit of information. The primary source of funding yeah. for demolition properties is community development block grant funds. Those are federal funds that come to the city. They have a number of uses. Mm -hmm. We give them to third party agencies, first time home buyer program, home repair program. But there's also an allocation in that for blight removal. So that's that's where those funds come from. The city does have general fund dollars should we run out of CDBG funds uh, to complete any demolitions. So question, I know uh, you have mentioned before having a, a manageable list of properties, even though there is a, a longer list um, out there right now. What could we potentially look at lengthening that, that list to attack more at, at one time, you know, uh, as far as... We, you know, we did 10, which is great, but uh, there's some traction on some. There's movement on others and decisions on others. So what's the thought behind that? It, it kind of varies by year. In past years, we've had longer lists. Um, so what we did this year, the code enforcement officers came back with about twice this number of properties. Mm -hmm. um, so as you're all aware, we have a land bank established. And so we as staff went through the properties that came back and tried to pull out the properties that we thought would be more appropriate for a land bank um, type situation that maybe weren't quite such a blighting influence on the neighborhood that would be a little bit better. So um, we'll start reaching out to those property owners now to see if we can get those donated to the land bank and get those flipped back around. Because, you know, really the intent is to get homes back into use and not be taking properties down and leaving these holes in a neighborhood so um, right. you know really that's the goal is to you know to get them repaired and so um, the hope is that through a land bank and those activities we can get more repaired and put back into productive use um, instead of this with taking them down and using funds um, to sure. do do it on the city's behalf instead of you know property owners taking them over and um, okay. rehabbing them themselves okay. so, the other so yeah, there's, it's, a, it's sort of a two-pronged process sure for thank you and the other hurdle we run into is they have to be unoccupied for more than a yeah. year mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. there's a lot that are probably as bad or worse that people actually live in yeah. but as long as they have water right. service because then you get into there are huge requirements for relocation expenses mm -hmm. if you displace any um, inhabited structures mm -hmm. and so it, it has to have been vacant and we just it, that's why Bethany talked about the last date of water service that's how we determine mm -hmm. uh, when and it was last occupied. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. Appreciate that. 
Do we get lists of those that are being considered for the land bank? Uh, we have not brought those forward yet, um, but you will. I can, okay. I can yes. share them with you. Sure. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Do you have a number? Or I think um, there is about six we pulled from the six. list. Yeah, about six or seven. And we have pre-qualified contractors. Yes. And then those would go to a bid process, and they would mm -hmm. bid on the land bank yeah. properties once they're accepted into the land bank. Yeah. And then uh, that process would get those back on the tax rolls. And yes. Our hope is that we can get a few here in the land bank uh, yeah. for you yet this spring to <coughs> bring into that process and get them That's turned good. around. So 16 properties total? Yeah. Well, appreciate it. Thank yep. you. Mm -hmm. Thank, yep. you. Thank you. That's your question. Uh, next item on the agenda, uh, mayor's appointments. Uh, I move to reappoint to the Leavenworth Preservation Commission Richard L. Gibson and Edward Otto to terms ending April 15, 2026. Uh, and also move to appoint to the library board Lisa Weekly and Myron Mike Griswold to terms ending April 30th, 2027. Second. A motion has been seconded. Begin voting with uh, Commissioner Hingula. I abstain. Aye. Aye. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm staying too at the moment. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. Where is the oh, she's in here? So I guess we need to hold off on that until. Let me revisit this. Yeah, revisit this. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. It's the first time. Can we go to happened. the next and come back? Yes. Okay, let's move to the next item and we'll come back. That'll make things okay. interesting. Oh, that's really yeah. interesting. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda, city commission goals. Yeah, Mr. Mayor and Commission, um, at the uh, Friday, March 24th, City Commission conducted its annual goal setting session. At the meeting, the commission added, edited, and removed items from the list. The updated goals document um, reflects those edits and is attached. And I'm just going to briefly go through some of the changes in each of the highlighted sections. Again, this is just a guiding document for staff for the city uh, to go through for the year. It is uh, by no means an exhaustive list of all the activities that go on uh, in a year in the city, but just those ones that we have focused on uh, for the upcoming year. So in economic development, we added explore opportunities, partnerships, and other message. And I think this was the key to this one, to increase traffic in the downtown, including events and arts and cultural attractions. I think there was an emphasis to try to have more happen in the downtown, whether that's city-sponsored with your partnership. So we added that into it. Uh, we modified the goal to advocate for the renovation uh, of the existing Bureau of Prisons facilities. That also included to continue for the new facility that is going to be awarded in uh, the summer and start construction. That's all set. It's fully funded. Um, so that's a go. So now our goal is the adaptive reuse of the existing facility. So that's really where our focus is. Uh, continue and expand city small business symposium. This will be the second year of that. It was successful in the first year. Um, continue to expand that. And then um, add down the downtown park enhancements. Uh, we had talked uh, specifically about the downtown park there at 3rd and Delaware. Uh, so that's when economic development and community improvement. Uh, we removed the Explore more accessible, attractive, and functional recycling center. All the efforts uh, out there have completed. We relocated the recycle center. Um, the entrance have done quite a bit of work out there. And then another success story is use the city solid waste citizens task force to evaluate and make recommendations on refuse collections. Um, we are barreling ahead with that whole program. The carts have been ordered. Um, it is in play. Uh, we'll continue to track numbers and uh, information on that, but as far as a goal to uh, evaluate the recommendations and implement them, uh, that has been done uh, to date. We modified to implement the city's, uh, this one, we implemented it, so now we're going to implement the city's transit service, which started yesterday, and track metrics to monitor usage data. So we kept it on there, but this moves to a monitor, track uh, metrics and data, and report back to the commission on how it's going. Public safety, the chief added, um, placing an emphasis on fentanyl and opioids to uh, crime fighting efforts. And then we modified the goal to successfully complete replacement of fire station three, rather than just to consider it and explore it. Roadways and infrastructure, we modified um, uh, Centennial Bridge to continue to push for the full funding and expedient replacement of the Centennial Bridge in Kansas fiscal year 2026. Again, until that thing, uh, until we break ground, I think we should keep it on the list. Um, right now it's uh, for 2026. And then just uh, five that we completed, improvements west of the Centennial Bridge. We talked about there's really going to be no emphasis on the state to put any money on the west side of that until the new bridge is built. Uh, supporting projects that lead to annexation. Annexation hasn't gone anywhere recently uh, and anytime soon. 
We did achieve a 90-day emergency reserve in the wastewater budget. We completed the condition assessment for the wastewater treatment plant, and we completed and presented to the commission the uh, assessment for traffic signals. On outreach and transparency, we added to revise and update the city's reserve policy to update and revise financial policies related to cooperative purchasing and to create a multi-year budgeting and cash forecasting tool. Those were added in outreach and transparency. And then number six, under other items receiving general support, prioritize and explore efforts related to employee recruitment and retention. Annual update. Uh, the next two were actually, I think, we picked up from last year, and we just need to get those scheduled. The annual update of Workforce Partnership and annual update for the Guidance Center. And then I think we added this year a semi-annual update from the Chamber of Commerce, which we haven't had uh, before. So those were the um, ones, uh, modifications, additions, and deletions that I tracked. And they are before you to adopt, and we'll go ahead and then put them on the city manager's page on the website. Uh, and I provide quarterly-ish uh, updates to the commission on the progress on those goals. So if there's any questions, comments, uh, happy to answer those at this time. Thank you, Paul. Uh, are there any questions or comments from commissioners? No. no. Thorough. Thank you. Thorough. Yeah. No. At this yeah. time, I'll Looks good. A motion. I move to... Uh, question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. Um, I thought we said explore important in, under, um, under community improvement. I thought we had changed it because of the Boys and Girls Club back in out. I thought we had changed it to Big Brothers Big, Brothers, Big Sisters. Sisters. And it but, still says Boys and Girls Club. Well, it says or similar organization. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we do have them on the agenda two weeks from tonight. And so yeah. it's real close to okay. potentially be in there, so I left it. But sure. yeah, point noted. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the plan for sewer replacement of our current records management system under the fire department they're they're struggling to get it perfectly useful right but that's been accomplished has it not i would say yes that's that's fair um they're still i know they're still working through all the bugs and the yeah. and the implementation and the records uh transfer so yeah we can we can um i uh, think that one should indicate a full completion on my first update to you i'll say hey it's it's all complete at this point sure cool. thanks for that mm -hmm. um oh and just under other items receiving general support d mm -hmm. The last one is Alliance Against Family Violence. So they've been, they've. No, I mean just the name. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not Sorry about that. I was going to say Alliance they've been invited. Against family. But, right, the, the typo. So, yeah, I'll add that. And I'll continue to invite um, them to present. Um, yeah. I know they've yeah, had some sure. staffing uh, shortages, so they haven't been able to be here. But um, I'll continue to ask them to come and, and that, That's all I need. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. So we need to move the goals with as amended or? As presented, those as are just presented? Uh, okay. uh, text changes that I can make. Mm -hmm. yep. I move the approval of the 23-24 City Commission goals as presented. Second. Motion has been seconded. Begin voting with Commissioner Hingula. Aye. 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 Motion carried for zero. Next item on the agenda. We have. Yeah. Oh, we have clarification. So go back to the library. We yeah, can do that. Okay. Uh, so there are two potentially pertinent uh, sections of the code that could apply here, uh, depending on um, your respective positions on this. Section 2-55C establishes a duty to vote among commission members, provides members of the city commission have a duty to vote unless such member declares a conflict of interest or other conflict that appears to, be met, appears to make voting on an issue improper. Any member who declares a conflict of interest must state for the purpose of its inclusion in the minutes the reason for the conflict of interest and step down from the dais uh, for that voting discussion. Uh, this action does not result in a vote being recorded for the member declaring a conflict of interest. If there is not a conflict of interest, um, there is a separate section 2-55D that establishes, unless otherwise specifically required by law, the adoption or rejection of resolutions and other motions shall be by a majority of those present, any member who abstains from voting for any reason other than set in subsection C, which as I just read, shall be counted as having voted against the motion. So if your purpose for abstaining is a conflict of interest, um, then you would need to establish that conflict uh, for the record here and step down for the discussion. If uh, it is not a reason for abstaining due to a conflict of interest that you are speaking, then you will any person abstaining will be determined to have, it'll be counted as a no vote <clears throat> against the motion. Yeah, understood. I, 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 I guess I don't know if I can modify mine now or not, but mine would be a no vote. So, yeah. So I, I, would, I would recommend 
you know, probably by consent of the commission to have a reconsideration and have a revote on this. If that's without objection from the, mm -hmm. from the commission, that'd probably be the proper action here. Okay, today. so um, okay, so I'll move to uh, reappoint to the Lemoore Preservation Commission Richard L. Gibson and Edward Otto to terms ending April 15, 2026, and also move to appoint to the Library Board Lisa Weekly and Meyer and Mike Griswold to terms ending April 30th, 2027. Second. Uh, begins voting with Commissioner Engler. Aye. 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 No. All right. Motion carried. Three one. Uh, next item on the agenda: first consideration ordinance to uh, rescind special use permit at 1830 South Broadway Street. Mr. Mayor and Commission, as you will remember, we rezoned uh, what was formerly the Council on Aging. I actually, rezoned it twice. Um, second time clearing it up. The item before you now is the final item re related to the old uses to revoke the uh, rescind the special use permit that allowed a convalescent nursing home at that facility that was again tied to that use. So this is just to rescind that final item that was attached to it, which was the special use permit. Okay. Uh, questions and it's just uh, first consideration tonight. Yeah, we just need a consensus. Yeah, there's no comments. Yeah. And I, consensus yeah. before? Okay. Yes. This is something we know. Yep. Thank you. Uh, yes. Consent agenda. Um, I move um, approval of claims for March 25, 2023 through April 7, 2023 in the amount of one million five hundred eighty-two thousand one hundred seventeen dollars and seventy-two cents. Net amount for payroll number seven, effective April 7, 2023 in the amount of $358,488.52. No police and fire pension. Second. The motion has been seconded. We have voted with Commissioner Martin. Aye. 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 Motion carried, 4-0. Uh, before we enter into our executive session, uh, I want to go around the table to see if there's uh, any comments from our city manager. I don't have anything tonight. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Hingo. I hope everybody had a... Happy and joyous Easter. That uh, enjoy the rest of spring. The weather's great. Yeah. Mr. Yep. Martin, no comments here. I just want to remind everybody that buses are running, and um, they are. You can always call that number that's on the on the website. I wish I had it in front of me so I could read it off. But um, um, I was having trouble uh, registering on the app, but but you just have to make sure that you read all of the legal <laughs> the legal stuff and then check that check mark that so you can get the app and otherwise oh and we have julie she can explain it better than i can i just wanted to say um we had a call this morning with the team that's been working on it um and they just kind of gave an update they had a few rides booked yesterday on the first day and they had a few more rides booked today so everything is running smoothly so far and so we're hopeful that every day it keeps getting a little bit more um, and we have access uh, to the dashboard of that, so we'll be able to, um, once we start getting some data after it's been running for a while, be able to, we'll be able to bring back some information to you all just to kind of keep you updated on how it's going. But do try to download that app because it's really great. I mean, you, yes. can, you can book your, you know, you can book multiple, multiple um, trips. So if you're going to work, you could book multiple trips. Mm -hmm. And there isn't any limit on it like, like in the, you know, on in other bus services, there's no limit. So... It, um, it's a great thing, and, and please look into it. And if you have any questions, you can sure call mm -hmm. Julie here in the office or, or call me. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. I uh, just wanted to say thank you all. God bless, and hope you have a great week. Um, at this time, uh, we'll move we to have, the... Did you have anything? No. Okay. All right, I'll start with anything. Oh, sure. Uh, move the city commission recess into executive session for a period of... Uh, return to this chamber at 7.15. Uh, by the clock in the chamber. So 15. Uh, and Mr. Mayor, you, you need to establish what the purpose of it for. So yeah, I got you, okay. yeah. sir. Uh, the purpose of discussing this acquisition of real property pursuant to the pre uh, preliminary discussion of the acquisition of real property exception per KSA 75-4319-B6, uh, the city commission, city manager, and city attorney will be present. The open meeting will resume in the commission chambers at 7.15 p.m. Uh, second? Second. Motion has been second. Aye. 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 All right, motion carried. Executive session.
session. Um, motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Omni. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, who made spaghetti and meatballs earlier?